Hello one, hello all. It is the most air-conditioned ghost of them all, Caspa in the flesh, and it's time for a review of Group Therapy. I was mature for my age, but I was still a child. Group Therapy, Cali Music Group is back, and this is their third studio album. And not only do they rap, not only do they sing, but they also act as well, which isn't really too much of a surprise due to how much character they show on this album. Now, admittedly, their first two albums did not cross my radar, unfortunately, but what really caught my eye was the singles going into this, such as Funk Fest, which to me was a solid amalgamation of experimental rap, pop rap, but also some dance punk, and also some synth punk as well. Definitely, like, I got Devo vibes with the breakdown in the uh, shouted group vocals. Do it! Do it! Do it! And one thing you will notice about this album is there is a lot of chemistry on here. They are a group that really works together as a group on this album. And on the track Peak, which has this angelic hook, pumping vocal samples that really create this foundation for the production, and beautiful melodies, beautiful melodic chemistry between TJ Online and Jada Grace. And what I should have mentioned before is this group does consist of three members. How silly of me. Jada Grace, Swim, and TG Online. And after hearing the singles, I was really anticipated to hear this album. And when I finally heard this album in its entirety numerous times, I was not disappointed. Also, the strength and the power of three members on this does not disappoint. There is not a member here that is a weak link because each of them brings something new to the table, each of them brings something unique, something witty, something standout to bring to each track. And as I said before, they're actors, so that would explain why they bring so much expression to the mic, why they bring so much character to a track. And definitely bring a group dynamic that has not hit me this hard in quite a while, like since Brock Hampton. Like on this thing, you get a variety of passionate, you get a variety of aggression, you get a variety of sleek, you get a variety of soulful, nocturnal, and the production on here goes hard as fuck. Sharing a lot of personal thoughts here while rapping about not really... Sharing personal thoughts on here while rapping about conveying their thoughts, which we will get into. And they're not really holding much back here. And there are a lot of songs here that you could play in the club. And ironically, there is a song called Club Song, which is actually not really a song you would play at the club. It's honestly the most laid back, most serene track on here. And actually the most somber. Not to say that's bad, it's actually a very beautiful ballad on here. It's a heartening acoustic track, it's dreamy, it's serene, it's harmonious, and I love the hand percussion, the twinkling keys that come in in the back end, and god it makes me ascend but it kills me at the same time. And with the song being called Club Song, and this being a song that you wouldn't necessarily dance to, is nothing short of genius. And god, the duetted vocals really make me want to cry on here. Especially when you dive into the lyrical theme of the track, it just opens up the wound so much more. There's also other songs too that um, are emotionally moving. A lot of songs are emotionally moving, but even more so. Like the heavy gospel synth chords on the closer, with these beautiful falsetto vocals on the back end, with well-deserved criticisms launched at how racist America could be, about how they want to duplicate their style of black Americans and black culture, but also show bigotry and racism at the same time. Really pointing out the hypocritical status of the country we live in. And the wordplay, the sentiment is great, about being grateful to be alive, still prospering. And I love the heavenly burst of brightness in the production. With a simple but powerful refrain from Jada about having this fear of existence, but realizing that living in the fear of existence is pretty mitigating and kind of makes you lose focus on what you enjoy in life. You've been focused on basically being safe to live life, but forgetting also how to enjoy it, how to prosper and go about the enjoyments of life. And the choir vocals on the back end are just gorgeous. And the song Hot, which is probably the most explosive banger 
on here. The opening verse is very unique with these low pitch vocals and these chanted shouting vocals in between. And the hook has this repetitious main refrain with these various background vocals to make it pop in the mix from Jada who does most of the hooks on here. But also her verse is very standout. It's very half rapped, half sung, very amplified, very in your face. Kind of like a Rico Nasty on what she was doing on her last album. Except I would say with more punch this time around, a little bit more flavor. Sorry Rico. With this warped synth bass and as the track progresses, it gets more lighter. It gets more brighter and more futuristic as the track goes on. Which honestly complements the following track, Club Song, as I talked about earlier. As far as styles go, they definitely range from a lot because what they're doing here is they're taking 2000s hip-hop, R&B, and pop, but also adding other elements to it as well. Adding the breakbeats to the mix, adding dance music to the mix, adding house music to the mix. Like, it's glossy, it's club-friendly, it's rhythmic, it's very Pharrellish, if I would say. So I could see this being mainstream, but not sounding so focus-grouped at the same time. Adding experimental elements to the mix, like the bombastic pounding production on Lightspeed, that I could see being played in like a futuristic dystopian nightclub. And also killing it with like a lavish runway style on the track, How I'm Feeling. Which, even though the production is sexy, it's alluring, and sounds feel good, the lyrics here and the track in general is actually very emotionally and mentally troublesome. So as this album goes on, you definitely notice a lot of contrast to be recognized here. Like we also get on the track Smiles, which has these dusty pianos, this angular jazzy production, which is a song about holding in depression with only showing the positivity on the surface and being discouraged to show how you're actually feeling with the fear of being called out as vulnerable, which is something I would not recommend and I do feel is unhealthy. And due to the patriarchal standards we have, I feel like that is mainly the reason and that is and that is also a reason for that feeling, that fear of vulnerability, fear of showing emotion. As far as themes go, I would say that this is definitely a track about mental health. I would say this is a track surrounding therapy, meaning that this track is surrounding therapy and venting. And I feel this album is therapeutic in a way. It's therapeutic while providing constant quality. Whether it's the lyrics, whether it's the production, whether it's the performances on this thing. I do think there are some tracks on here that do borrow from the low points of other artists. Be it chance or sometimes just a little standard and not as adventurous or just half-baked. Like, I would say the songs help and help too pretty much falter, but mostly falter from a structural angle. It feels like an unfinished track. Well, two mainly sounds like an unfinished track. It sounds like Chance the Rapper and Griselda did a track together and didn't finish, unfortunately. But when this thing bangs, it fucking bangs. Like on the track Nasty that has this heavy hip house bass, very groovy production on here. Crispy snares, woozy vibrating synths, with these sexy classy strings just swaying through the track. It's very Kanye meets Pharrell, but also what I want to address here is the, the contrast of the rough and the smooth with these very clever bars and sticky hook. Or the rattling bass, the clunky tones, and the chanted vocals on the track DYSBF, which is Do Yo Shit Best Friend, with these sci-fi like synths on the hook. And vocals from Swim and TJ and Jada that are like very nonchalant. That are very nonchalant in tone, but definitely have a lot of character on this track. Also given how hype this track is, it's like the flows that they're choosing here aren't supposed to work. But they are. They are literally musician magicians on this track. And you can tell it's done purposely, but I feel Jada really steals the show on this one. With her verse being so standout, clever lines, and the hook is very exuberant, and probably the most catchiest song on here. And probably has the most catchiest hook 
on here. Do your shit, best friend, do your shit. Showing they can pull off a banger, but also be very nonchalant as well and not really take themselves too seriously in the process. While bringing a lot of humor, a lot of wit, and the way they do it too kind of reminds me of The Pack from back in the day. I'm not sure how many people remember The Pack. That is where Lil B is from. He is from that group. And a lot of the elements here like just ring to me as Brockhampton, as The Pack, as I would say just a lot of the stuff that we heard from Kanye at points, from Pharrell at points, even from Death Grips at points, like there's a lot of influence to be had here. But I feel they're adding their own little twist to it and also addressing some important subjects as well. Because it's not just bangers on this thing, it's not just catchiness, it's not just the memorability, it's also the message that they're getting through, the subjects that they're touching on from personal struggles, be them societal, be them internal, which provide a lot of introspection, even on their bangers too. Their bangers even have introspection as well, from sharing their opposing views on racism, on homophobia, on, on the patriarchy, feeling isolation from the patriarchy, self-loathing and also struggling with depression on here, having trust issues, substance abuse, and getting through economic struggles, heartbreak. There is a lot that is expressed on here. There is a lot that is addressed on here and really knows how to deliver it and really has this therapy theme running throughout, but also providing a release to their music. It's like a release for the listener in terms of the concept, but also in terms of the sonic release too. You definitely dance to these and you get a release from dancing, but you're also getting a release from them as well, from them venting to you, letting you know what they're feeling internally. And as I mentioned before, I feel there are students of Brockhampton, Kanye, showing how eclectic they are, how outspoken they are, and how they're not afraid to separate themselves from the crowd. These are kind of like outcasts in a way, maybe even students of outcasts as well. And I truly and honestly hope that they last longer. I hope we get more from group therapy. I hope that I am reviewing their eighth album years from now. Who knows? I just hope that we get more and who knows what they're gonna touch on next in terms of style. Who, know, who knows what style they will venture off into next? Who knows what subject matter they will touch on next? Who knows what the next concept is gonna be? And I'm absolutely here for it. So with the exception of a few tracks that I thought were kind of meh and not really well panned out, I think there is more to be had here and I am loving what I'm hearing now. I'm feeling a black four out of five on this album, and that's how I'm feeling. That's how I'm feeling. If you've given this album a listen, what did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? And why? Why? This, this is a good album. What's wrong with you? <laughs> okay. Caspa, Gothic Ghost, Group Therapy, I was mature for my age, but I was still a child to meet again.